Okay, this is the next episode of God's Game of Thrones. And we're going to look at Abraham and the nation of Israel. So you are going to be introduced to a new character, Abraham. And God calls Abraham out of his homeland. Abraham was alive when the Tower of Babel was being built. He was in Babylon and was called out. This is what the Lord says to the saints in the tribulation who were in Babylon. He says, come out. In Revelation 18.4, he says, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. So Abraham was called out of there. And Abraham was called the friend of God in James 2.23. And if you look at Genesis 12 and verse 1, it says, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And this is what many men refer to as the dispensation of promise. It has to do with what God promised to Abraham. In Genesis 15, 18, it says, In the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, Into thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt, and to the great river, the river Euphrates. And then in Genesis 17, 7 through 8, it says, And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee and their generations for an everlasting covenant, to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. Many refer to this as the Ab Abrahamic covenant. Abraham got righteousness because he believed God about his seed. In Genesis 15, 5, it says, And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven, and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. That where it says, Tell the stars, like a teller, someone counting. So he says, count, basically he says, Count the stars, if thou be able to number them. And says, That's how much your seed is going to be. And Abraham believed God about this. And he counted it to him for righteousness. The Lord gave him righteousness for believing him about what he said about his seed. Consider the difference in how we get righteousness today. In Romans 4, 1 through 6, it says, What shall we say then that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof the glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works. We get imputed righteousness through believing on Jesus Christ as our crucified, buried, and risen Savior. Abraham was given righteousness because he believed God about his seed. Now, he didn't go to heaven when he died. He went to paradise in the heart of the earth while he waited on Jesus Christ to shed his blood. So the righteousness that Abraham got for believing God about his seed did not get him eternal salvation. He didn't get to go to the third heaven until Jesus Christ shed his blood. But in the book of Genesis, you are introduced to, an, to this man, Abraham. And this is where you will see the formulation of the nation of Israel through this man, Abraham. Abraham is promised a seed. He is told he will have children in his old age, and he believes the Lord about that promise. He is 99 years old when he has a son. And this is significant. <clears throat> 99. That's significant. Because the number 9 is the number of fruitfulness in the Bible. It is Genesis chapter 9 when God tells Noah to be fruitful and multiply. The words Holy Bible has nine letters. Uh, 1611. Uh, that's 1 plus 6 plus 1 plus 1. That's 9. And the King James Bible is that's the, the number... It equals the number 9, the 1611 King James Bible. Add 1 plus 6 plus 1 plus 1. That's 9. Galatians is the ninth book in the New Testament. 
which shows you nine fruits of the Spirit. So there you have it. Genesis 12, 1 through 3. Now the Lord hath said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing, and I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So God calls out Abraham to be a father of people who would be his people. And it isn't given to Abraham the same way he gave it to Adam and Noah. The, this time God promises the kingdom of heaven to a seed that comes from Abraham. And Abraham's seed is promised a literal, visible, physical piece of land. That's why in this Game of Thrones episode, it's King Abraham and the nation of Israel. Because it's not just promised to Abraham, it's also promised to his seed, the kingdom of heaven is. And you know that the former king, Lucifer, who has the power of death, hates Israel because they are promised a literal, physical piece of land that he wants. And that is why today you have a group of professed King James Bible believers who believe in replacement theology. They teach the church replaces Israel. However, the devil knows who the land belongs to. Years and years after Abraham came Jesus Christ, who is the son of Abraham and the son of God. He is the real king. But during these days of Abraham, God requires some things that he does not require today. And that's what we'll talk about now is some dispensational differences here. Many people don't want to uh, acknowledge these dispensational differences. Deep down, they know that they're differences, but they just hate to be referred to as a dispensationalist. But, I mean, all, all it is, if you're a dispensationalist, is you're acknowledging that God dealt with man differently throughout the Bible. And I'm going to show you plainly here that Abraham was dealt with differently. And one of those ways is but with animal sacrifices in Genesis 15, 9 through 10, and also verse 17. <clears throat> It says, And he said unto him, Take me an heifer of three years old, and a she-goat of three years old, a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And he took unto him all these, and divided them in the midst, and laid each piece one against another. But the birds divided he not. Verse 17, And it came to pass that when the sun went down, it was dark. Behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. So you see, this is something we don't do today. You have Abraham doing the animal sacrifices. But we today have the ultimate sacrifice in the Lord Jesus Christ who died for our sins once and for all. He shed his blood for our sins once and for all. And there's no need for us today to do any bloody animal sacrifices. Another thing required of God during the time of Abraham is circumcision. In Genesis 17, 9 through 14, <clears throat> it says, And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore thou and thy seed after thee and their generations. This is my covenant, which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised, and the uncircumcised man child, whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He hath broken my covenant. So under this Abrahamic covenant, circumcision is required today circumcision is not required romans 3 30 says seeing it is one god which justify the a circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith the uncircumcision which would is referring to the jews the circumcision or the uncircumcision referring to the gentiles the circumcision referring to the jews but the uncircumcised today can be justified like the circumcised. In the New Testament, it refers to the Jews as the circumcision and Gentiles as the uncircumcision. But it's plainly taught in the New Testament that circumcision isn't going to help you. Uncircumcision isn't going to help you. And Abraham has sons. The one promised to him is Isaac. Isaac has sons. Esau and Jacob. Jacob has a bunch of sons. Uh, that's the seed that was promised to Abraham. 
the promises to Abraham are reaffirmed to Isaac. It's reaffirmed to Isaac. In Genesis 26, 3 through 5, it says, Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee, and will bless thee. For unto thee and to thy seed I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and I will give unto thy seed all these countries. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. So God is reassuring the promise to Isaac. And as you probably know, Isaac has a brother named Ishmael. The promised seed doesn't come through Ishmael, but through Isaac. Ishmael came about because Abraham and Sarah got impatient, waiting on the Lord to bring them a child in their old age. So Sarah gives Hagar her Hamite handmaid, to Abraham. So Ishmael is born to Abraham and Hagar. But this was another attempt by the former king of both kingdoms, Lucifer, to corrupt the seed. He did not want Jesus Christ to come about. He, he did not want children born to Abraham and Sarah in their old age because he knew that Jesus Christ would come in the flesh through that seed. Another attempt from Satan to corrupt the seed is when Abraham almost sacrifices Isaac, his son. The devil most likely approached the Lord in a Job-like situation, saying something like, My children sacrificed their children to me, but your children wouldn't sacrifice their children to you. So the Lord would have said, Well, we'll, we'll see about that. And he told Abraham to sacrifice Isaac. And Abraham would have done it if the angel of the Lord didn't stop him. This proves that the Lord's followers did love him enough to sacrifice their own children, and not just their own children, but the promised seed that Abraham waited for that was promised to him. At the same time, the devil thought he was sly enough to, the, to destroy the seed by the death of Isaac. He thought he was outsmarting Abraham and God. The seed promised to Abraham and Isaac, it's also promised to Jacob. It's reaffirmed to Jacob. In Genesis 35, 10 through 12, it says, And God said unto him, Thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel. And God said unto him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee. And kings shall come out of thy loins. In the land which I give Abraham and Isaac, to thee I will give it, and to thy seed after thee will I give the land. So Jacob has twelve sons who become the twelve tribes. One of them is Judah. He is heir to the throne. Judah inherits the scepter of the king. In Genesis 49.10, The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. So King David and Jesus Christ come from the line of Judah. And this is why Jesus is called the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Joseph, <clears throat> one of Jacob's sons, is sold off by his own brothers. And this pictures the Jews selling out Jesus Christ. You will find that Joseph is one of the greatest types of Jesus Christ in all of the Bible. So Joseph ends up in Egypt. And this is because it was God's plan to get Israel into Egypt. And if you have read the story, you know that because of a famine in the land, the brothers of Joseph, who sold him off to the Midianites, end up having to go to Egypt to get food. They didn't even realize that Joseph has become the second ruler in the kingdom and is the one supplying them. And eventually Joseph tells his brothers who he is, and his family comes to Egypt to be with him. That's how God gets Israel to Egypt. And it says in Genesis 46, 26, All the souls that came with Jacob into Egypt, which came out of his loins, besides Jacob's sons' wives, all the souls were three score and six. Now notice Jacob and his family go to Egypt to be with his son Joseph. And this is a great verse. Egypt in the Bible is a type of the world. And in, there in Genesis 46, 26, it says 66 souls went into Egypt. This pictures the 66 books of the Bible 
going into the world. Because the 66 people went into Egypt, the top of the world, that pictures the 66 books of the Bible going into the world. But this dispensation of promise ends with Egyptian bondage. 66 Jews go into Egypt, and then 430 years later, around 2 million of them come out. And this is when you'll be introduced to a man named Moses, King Moses. That's what we'll talk about next time.